Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about static attributes in classes. Now, a static attribute is basically just an attribute of a class that is the same for all of the objects of that class. So we can define a static attribute or a static variable inside of our class, and then all of the objects in that class will be able to access and have that same value. So this is a little bit of an abstract concept and really to fully understand it, I think I need to show you an example just so you can kind of wrap your mind around it. So over here in my text editor, I've actually created a Java class and I've created a Java class for a song. So you can see down here, it says public class song. So this class is basically just modeling a song inside of our program. So I could store um, three different pieces of information about a song. We can store the title of the song, the artist who wrote the song, and we can store the length of the song. So this is going to be like how many seconds the song is, and this is just going to be an integer. Then down here, I have a constructor. And this constructor allows other programs to create song objects. So you can create an individual song using this overall song template. And finally down here, I have some getters and setters. And whenever you create a class in Java, it's always, always, always a good idea to use getters and setters. Um, there's really no reason not to, and especially in a language like Java, um, most people are gonna expect you to have getters and setters for all of the attributes. So what I wanna do is show you how we, we can create a couple songs. So over here, I'm actually gonna create a couple different songs. So I went ahead and created two song objects. So I basically made two songs inside of my Java program. And the first one is just called Holiday. And it says new song. And this is just the title is Holiday. The artist is Green Day. And I'm just saying it's 200 seconds long. And I have another song called American Idiot. And the title is American Idiot. The artist is Green Day and it's 168 seconds long. So. I now have two songs inside of my program. So if I wanted to print out some information about these songs, I could just say system.out.println. And let's say that I wanted to print out holiday.getArtist. And what this is gonna do is it's basically gonna print out the artist for the holiday song. So now when I run my program, it should print out Green Day. And I could also do a similar thing for American Idiot. So I could come down here and why don't we print out American Idiot dot get title. So I'm printing out these two different attributes of these objects. So let's come up here and we'll also print out holiday dot get title. So these two objects have different information. So the title for the first object for this holiday object is different from the title for the American Idiot object. They're both the same type of object. They're both song objects, but they both have different attributes. So the title, the artist, and the length for the one object is different from the title, the artist, and the length for the other object. And so the point I'm trying to make is when you create an object, you're giving it these attributes, but those attributes are different across the objects. So for one object, the attributes are different from another object. Now, that's how it works when we're using just normal attributes. You know, these things like string title, string artist, string length. But there's actually a special type of attribute that we can use inside of our class, which is called a static attribute. And basically what that means is this is an attribute that's gonna be the same across all of the objects that we create for the song class. So any song objects that I create, that static attribute is gonna be the same for all of them. So they'll all share that same attribute. So let me kind of give you an example of how we could use something like this. So let's come over here and I'm just gonna create a static attribute. So I'm gonna make an attribute which counts how many songs have been created in our program. So let's say that inside of this song class, I just wanted to keep track of how many times a new song has been created. So how many song objects are out there? What I could say is private. And now instead of specifying the data type, I would just wanna say static. 
So I'm saying private static. And now after that static keyword, I can specify the data type. So I could say int and we'll call this songs count. And I'm just going to set this equal to zero initially. So we're creating a static attribute, which is a private attribute and it's an integer and I'm calling it songs count and I'm giving it an initial value of zero because this is a static attribute. This is going to be the same for all of the objects that I create from this song class. So let me demonstrate this. I'm going to come down here into this constructor and remember this constructor gets called every single time we create a new song. So anytime I create a song object, I'm calling this constructor. So down here, what I can do is every time we create a new song, I can increment this songs count. So I could say songs count plus plus, and that's going to increment this songs count every time we create a new song. And down here, I'm just going to print something out. So I'll say system dot out dot print line, and I'm just going to print out song count and I'll just print out songs count. So now that we've created this songs count plus plus, and also that we've printed out song count, so printing out the value of the song count. Now, when I go back over to my app.java file, which has this main method in it, and I create these two objects. So actually, I'm going to get rid of these print statements. So all I'm doing is creating these two songs, Holiday and American Idiot. What you'll notice is this is going to print out twice. So when I run this program, it prints out song count one and it prints out song count two. When I created the holiday object, that constructor method got called and it added one to the song count. So when I created holiday, we went over to this constructor, we incremented the song count, we printed it out. Then when I created this American idiot object, we went over to this constructor, we incremented the song count from one to two, and then we printed it out. So every single time, I create a new song, it's going to increment that count and it's going to know how many objects we've already created. That's why we're able to get two here. So just to make this a little bit more obvious, I'm going to come down here and I want to make another get method. So I'm just going to say public int get songs count. And this is just going to tell us what the songs count is. So I'm just going to say return songs count. And this will tell us how many songs have been created. So over here in my app.java file, I can come down here and I'm just going to print out holiday dot get songs count. It's going to tell me what the song count is for holiday. I'm also going to do the same for American idiot. So down here, we'll just say American idiot. So when I run this program, now you'll see we're creating the two songs, right? So when we create this holiday song, the counts one because we've only have one song. When I create the American idiot song, the counts two because now we have two songs. When I come down here and I access holiday dot get song count and American idiot dot get songs count, we're getting the same value. So over here, we're getting two and that's because at the time we're printing these out, we actually have two songs. So these both have the same attribute. They're, they, they're accessing that same songs count. So even though they're different instances of song, they're using that same attribute. And that's what a static attribute is. It's a, a variable or a value that is the same across all of the objects in a class. So just to really drive home this point, I'm going to make another song. So I'll just copy this again. And I'm going to make the song down here after we print this out. So Africa and it's going to be called Africa by Toto. And I don't know how long it is. Let's say it's like 300 seconds, whatever. So I'm creating this new song and I'm also going to print out the value of American idiot dot get songs count. I'm going to print out the value of holiday dot get songs count. And I'm also going to print out the value for Africa dot get songs count. So a lot of stuff should be printing out. Let's see what we get. I'm going to click this run button. So when we create our holiday object, the song count is one. When we create our American idiot object, the song count is two. 
When I print out the song count for Holiday and American Idiot, we get two. Now I'm adding a new song. So this new Africa by Toto song, the song counts now three. And when I print out all of these attributes, get songs count for each one of these individual objects, they're all gonna be three. So they're all using the same attribute across the class. So any songs are gonna have the same songs count. So that is a static attribute. These are extremely important in Java and there's a lot of circumstances where you're gonna wanna use them. So just to recap, I created this attribute by saying private. So like usually it's gonna be either private or public. Um, and then I specified it as static and I used this int keyword. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.